Joining us now, Sean Spicer. He's the Republican National Committee's uh, chief, uh, chief communications advisor, chief strategist. He's a senior advisor to the president-elect right now. Sean, thanks very much for joining us. Good afternoon, Well, Thanks for having me. So why did the president-elect choose uh, the ExxonMobil CEO, Rex Tillerson, to become the nation's next secretary of state? Oh, because, he, I mean, he's a world-class business leader that has connections throughout the globe. Uh, he has been unbelievably successful. And I think, as was just noted, he's a tough negotiator by everybody's standard. He's somebody that can implement a Trump agenda around the world, put reestablish America's place around the world, and get things done. That's what Donald Trump's looked for in all of his picks, are successful people who can get the job done. I think Rex Tillerson, by all accounts, is somebody that's going to get that, that's going to, that's going to do that. You've seen people like Bob Gates, Condi Rice, Stephen Hadley, very, very top-notch folks, and folks on the Hill, Senator Ron Johnson, Speaker Paul Ryan, Senator McConnell, others praise this pick because they realize that this is an individual that can get things done for this country. On the other hand, listen to uh, Republican Senator John McCain. Listen to what he told our Jake Tapper on the lead yesterday. This guy is a thug and a murderer, and I don't see how anybody could be a friend of this old-time KGB agent. He was referring to Vladimir Putin has a pretty good relationship with uh, Mr. Tillerson. Now, how do you respond to the critics saying he's too close to Russia? Well, it's not a question. I mean, I, I think, frankly, if we want to get things done in Russia, we need somebody who has a relationship not just with Putin, but from other world leaders. That, that's how things get done. It's not just tough talk and rhetoric, but people who have a relationship and could have, can put America's interests first and foremost to achieve our interests. I mean, so I think if the, if the hit against Rex Tillerson is that he has a relationship with people like Putin and other world leaders and is able to get things done. But again, you look at Exxon. There's no question that he's been highly successful. He's, by all accounts, a tough negotiator. And yes, he's got relationships. I think that's what we want out of the next Secretary of State. Somebody who's going to go reestablish our interest around the globe, stand up to world leaders, put America's interests first, and, and achieve great things. That's why Donald Trump picked him. That's why he'll be confirmed. And that's why he'll do a great job as our next Secretary of State. Do you uh, think uh, that uh, uh, John Bolton uh, will be the Deputy Secretary of State? One thing I've learned around here is the only person who makes those decisions is Donald Trump. It'll be up to him to decide who that deputy secretary will be, as well as other high-ranking positions within the State Department and throughout the government. I want to just see if you can, you can clarify, because uh, I, I know it's been a big issue in recent days. Uh, the, C, the CIA, the intelligence community, the FBI, they all agree the Russians hacked democratic institutions, the DNC, John Podesta's uh, Gmail account. He was the chairman of the Hillary Clinton campaign. Uh, they, they disagree on what the purpose, the motive was. The, uh, the intelligence community thinks it was to try to help Trump get elected president. The FBI disagrees. They think they were just trying to meddle and cause some mischief. Uh, but there also seems to be an emerging consensus that while they, the Re Republicans didn't hack uh, the Republican National Committee, they did hack Republican institutions and political operatives. What can you tell us about that? Well, what is that we've got a lot of unnamed sources making accusations. And I think that one of the things that we were presented last Friday night was several media institutions coming to us and saying that the conclusions that the intelligence agencies that we are talking to, or at least the sources, conclude that because they hacked both the RNC and the DNC, we have come, they have concluded that therefore Russia did the following. And our pushback was, well, we have conclusive proof that they didn't hack us, therefore the predicate is wrong, therefore the conclusions should be called into question. That's it, plain and simple. I think that what we've had is a lot of people citing unnamed sources from unnamed agencies, making it seem as though those are credible outcomes. What we need is more credible understanding of what actually happened uh, and more concrete uh, disclosures of what agencies think exactly what and why. But right now we have a lot of folks in the media running around trying to make accusations as to what they think their sources claim have happened, and yet there's no concrete proof to actually show that any of those conclusions are based in sound practice. So you agree with the FBI that, yes, the Russians hacked, uh, but uh, it was not designed necessarily to get Trump elected. It was designed to muddy the waters, if you will, embarrass the United States. Is, is that what I'm hearing? No, because what I think we throw around this word hacked, and I think that there's a difference between um, what the forensic folks talk about probing, trying to see what's out there, uh, trying to figure out if they can find an entrance point. That's called probing. Hacking is actually achieving the means by getting inside of an organization or getting inside of a computer system 
to, uh, to extract data. So in some cases, it's just merely probing around. I think that's what, uh, you know, hackers do that, other countries do that, other organizations do that. And I think what we have is a lot of rumor about different organizations potentially doing it and who may be behind those organizations. Um, I think there's further um, investigation that needs to be done, but there needs to be a lot less speculation and a lot more fact. So you want these investigations to go forward in the House and the Senate, as uh, Mitch McConnell, majority leader in the Senate, and others have called for. But let me be precise on this, because it's a well, sensitive... But, but hold on. Well, it, well, one, yeah. one, one delineation, one, one I think I think this is, th th there's a difference between the integrity of our voting system, right? I, I agree. Donald Trump agrees. Everybody, I think all Americans would agree that we don't want any entity, foreign or otherwise, getting involved in our election system and trying to either interfere in any way, whether it's trying to change the outcome or otherwise. But there's another piece of this, which is left-wing groups, and frankly, some of the media, who are trying to delegitimize Donald Trump's resounding win on November 8th. And I think that's some point for, for all of the talk that occurred prior to November 8th, to hear these folks, and to hear a lot of the folks, frankly, on the Hillary Clinton campaign, who have yet to get over the fact that they lost and they lost big, is upsetting, because it was, the, it was our side that was getting questioned of whether we would accept the results of these elections, whether we believed in the integrity of the election system. And now that we, Donald Trump won big, 306 electoral votes, 2,300 counties, 62 million votes, it is now everyone coming back to us and saying, well, we've got these unnamed sources and we believe the following. But, but the fact of the matter is, is that we should all agree in the same way that we agree that no one should interfere with our elections, we should equally agree that Donald Trump won resoundingly by the rules of the game that were established. He will be the next president and we should uh, want to ensure that we have integrity in our democracy as well. But but do you agree, I assume you agree, that uh, if in fact the Russians hacked uh, and whatever you want to use, uh, whatever word you want to use, there, there are important lessons to be learned and a full review should be done by the various congressional committees as well as by the U.S. intelligence community and the law enforcement community. You support that sure, kind but, of but I also review. Think Absolutely. But, I, but, but let's take it back a step. I believe that institutions, whether they be government or private, should be putting pro proper protocols in place to ensure that they have the highest integrity in their own systems, first and foremost. Secondly, sure, I believe that we should ensure that no entities are looking into uh, either attacking our own government or our institutions that are achieving to abide, be involved in the electoral process. But, but I think that this, that's vastly different than whether or not there was a difference in the outcome of the election. This is a bunch, there were some disclosures about emails that, frankly, the other piece of this is not getting talked to. Is the only reason that we're talking about some of this is because John Podesta and, and Neera Tandon and others on the left said some things in emails that they wish didn't come out. If they hadn't behaved the way that they did, then none of this would have happened. They wrote those emails. They're the ones who had a secret server. They're the ones who didn't put proper protocols in place. And I don't, by any means, I also, you know, I'm not disqualifying the second piece of this. But I think that we've got to, we keep forgetting in this discussion that it was them who had a secret server. It was them who didn't abide by the rules and regulations that have been set by the government and by the State Department to, to ensure right. that some of this kind of stuff wouldn't happen. And that's been lost in this discussion. I, I know you got to go, but one quick question. I just want to button this up about a hacking of Republican institutions. Mike McCall, the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, he told me back in September uh, on my show that uh, the RNC had been hacked. He later corrected that. He said, I misspoke by asserting that the RNC was hacked. What I had intended to say was that in addition to the DNC hack, Republican political operatives have also been hacked. Uh, Two-pronged question. Which Republican political operatives were hacked, and why wasn't that information released? Well, one, it's not my job to speak for anybody but the Republican National Committee at that time. And my job was to ensure that people understood that we had taken certain protocols, put things in place, and that we hadn't been hacked. So that was my only concern at that time. I'll have to let others speak for themselves. And it's, frankly, it's not my job, nor is it anyone else's, to speak for other organizations or other individuals in terms of whether they may or may not be hacked. One of the things that's important to understand is when you have even this discussion that you or I are having, it's basically an invitation to folks. And we've got to make sure that we understand that those kind of just discussions implications for people in terms of the security of their networks. All right, we'll leave it on that note, uh, Sean, but we'll continue this conversation down the road, I'm sure. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Wolf. Coming up